Welcome to the channel. I'm Dan Lee and in this series of videos I'm building a quarter scale version of our new boat design Temptress. That's what you can see in front of me here underway and in this video we're going to be building some more of the frames. We looked at a couple of different frames in previous videos and we built the strongback system that we're starting to set things up on. So uh, first thing we're going to do is build a few more frames. Let's get started on that. So we're up to getting frame 10 together and frame 10 differs from the other frames quite a bit because there's actually a section that is going to be cut out in the middle of this further down the line. So um, it needs a little bit of a different approach at this early stage in the build and um, something a bit special will happen to it when we um, right down the line once we've got the bottom of the boat on. So let's take a little look at how frame 10 is different. So I've got frame 10 set up on the construction board and you will see that there is no keel gusset. So the two halves of frame 10 actually aren't connected to each other right now. And um, so that's our reason for needing a slightly different approach. Why is that done? Well, frame 10, you can just about kind of see it from here, um, is in this position here in the boat. And that actually will land right where the bottom of the V-Drive gearbox will sit when the engine goes in the boat. And we're gonna be very tight on space in that area. So frame 10 is actually partially sacrificial and will be, um, will be cut out of the boat at a later stage. What will actually happen to this was, is it will be cut on the inside edge of these stringers and all of this middle section will be removed. So that at this early stage means that we don't have a connection between the two. So we're gonna to need to do some extra bracing when it comes to putting all this together so that we can uh, actually put the frame in the boat without the two pieces falling apart. So I'll get on and build the rest of the frame 
and uh, we'll look at what it looks like when it's braced. Okay, so slight decision made on the fly there. Uh, I kind of realized actually, why don't we just put a sacrificial gusset in the middle of the frame and we don't have to worry about any extra bracing. So that's what I've done, just a couple of bits of off-cut ply and uh, I've glued them in place. All of this is gonna be cut out at a later stage, so um, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. And it doesn't particularly matter that the key all cut out isn't there for it at the moment either. We can quite easily do that a um, little bit further down the line. So we'll revisit that again quite a bit later on in the project because it'll, be, um, it'll be some time before that gets done. Probably actually when the boat's turned over. So we've got all the bottom to go on first before that will get cut out. But there will be some bits along the way just to remember to do. For example, we don't particularly want to bond the hull planking to this part of the frame that is going to be removed. So um, we'll, we'll address that later on. Um, that's another sort of reason for me kind of doing this process as well really is just to remind myself of things like that that maybe aren't quite so clear in the plans because I didn't actually put that on any of the detail for frame 10 which I should have done really but um, as I say that's part of the reason for doing this is, to, is for me to work through it pick up anything that may have been missed and that may not be that clear and um, make any little refinements along the way that need doing. So, frame 10, we'll get it on the strong back. So, we've got a good amount of frames done now. There's a few missing teeth still so we've got frame four to do i've got a uh, frame four's got a big bulkhead on it this is one of the 18 mil bulkheads that are in the boat so um, i haven't cut those parts yet so i haven't done frame four and also frame nine is the one that that's also got an 18 mil bulkhead in it so i haven't cut those parts yet so uh nine and four still to go in and i haven't done the last couple of frames as well what else am I missing? Um, yeah, there's frame nine, frame 12, and I haven't done frame 13 either. So I'll carry on working on those, but we'll just take a quick look around things and um, see what we've got, because there's quite a good amount here that I can start to show you how the setup of things work. So a couple of points to note. One of the things I've done is that I've um, transposed the lines for the waterline one around all sides of the leg. So obviously when we mark it from the straight frame construction board, it's just on one side. I've actually squared that round all sides of the leg and you'll see what that, the reasoning for that in a second, because we'll grab a laser in a minute and we'll get, um, we'll get lining all of this up. I've also marked up each of the frames, just put a number on there and I've just put an aft or a forward position on them. So. You just want to reference that against the drawing here because they're in various different varying layouts where the legs are on the back side of some frames, on the forward side of other frames. And um, when the frames come in and out the boat through the various dry fit stages, you want to make sure that they go back in the right place. Just a little numbering and then a simple aft or forward on there is good practice to do. Whilst we're on the subject of that, there was a note that I wanted to put in about um, material thicknesses and just one thing that could potentially catch you out um, in this process. I thought I mentioned it in the strong back video, but uh, I don't think it made the edit. So um, it's just a note that basically all of these strong back rung dimensions are, as I mentioned, from the aft face of the stem rung, and then they go to the aft face of every rung throughout the strong back and in some instances there are frames that fit on varying different parts
So if we look down here, um, some of these frames are on the aft face. So the dimension that, that it, this gives here is to the control face of each frame. Now there are a couple of instances where that can potentially shift and the only time that this is going to cause an issue for anybody is if you use a different thickness material to what we've specified here. So we specify 18 mil or three quarter inch um, particle board or MDF. So that's only going to cause you an issue in certain circumstances and frame 11 is an example of that. So if you imagine that your strong back is dimensioned from the aft face of the stem rung to the aft face of rung 11. So that's this side of, um, of the 11th rung. The control face, which is where the leg meets the, the rung, is in the correct place here because this is the equivalent of 18 mil. If say this was increased to 25 mil, that's gonna have the effects of shifting the face further forward that's potentially gonna mean that things are out of position. Now with this frame, it doesn't really matter because we're dimensioning to the back face. So if we increase the thickness of this timber, it's just gonna increase this way and it's not gonna affect the face that the frame is sat on. With this frame, if we increase the thickness of the timber because it's dimensioned to the back edge, it's going to increase in this direction and it's going to shift the position in which the frame is sat. A little bit complicated. I hope that makes sense and that I've explained it clearly, but um, basically it comes down to a similar thing to what I said before. I really strongly advise that if you're building one of these, build it as we've specified it. Don't um, change dimensions because little things like that that um, can be potentially unforeseen will trip you up down the line and um, I might not always be able to help you advise with it and it could get to the point where um, you've got something out of place and it doesn't fit and it might take us a little while to work out why that is. Um, we'll get to the bottom of it eventually and um, if you're building one of these boats, even a model or a full size thing, I'm always here to help on the end of a, an email or, um, or a message if you run into problems. So, you know, we'll do our best to uh, to help people along the way but um, things like that that's just a little example of where you could potentially run into an issue so I just wanted to highlight that whilst we were on the uh, subject of it so let's grab a laser level and we'll start to set this whole thing up so we've got a laser line set up now the waterline one plane is um, we give a sort of reference measurement for it to be uh, just above the face of the the top of the strong back it's not really a critical dimension, to be honest. It just wants to be a little bit clear of it. So I think we state like um, 75 mil in the plans. So it wants to be um, high enough that you've, um, as I say, you're clear of the top face of the strong back, but not so high that you're gonna start to um, run out of leg space on the uh, frames. So the basic idea behind this is that that creates a perfect flat level plane through everything that we're going to have in the boat and everything has this waterline one reference but right now it's going to get all of our frames at the perfect height so the way that we're going to do that is just to put our frame up against its rung in the strong back and then we just slide it up until we break that laser line and then we're just going to tack that in place so if you're doing a full-size boat you'd be doing this with bigger clamps and eventually these will actually get screwed in place and um, fixed pretty permanently. But I re recommend doing a complete dry fit of everything several times initially, just to make sure that you're happy with how everything goes. So we'll get one side up and we'll get the other side. And because I'm moving around, this laser is just jumping a little bit. So I'll let that settle. And then I'm just gonna lift that up until our waterline one mark just breaks the laser. We can double check that and tweak it. So there we go. That's frame 11 positioned for its height and 
because we've got an auto level on the uh, on the laser we know that that's going to be perfect throughout the whole boat so we can set every frame up um, using that system and the good thing with that is that if there's anything goes amiss further down the line you can very quickly check back and see if a frame shifted or something's moved you can reset that laser at any time throughout your build and um, you can just double check um, if anything's changed so there's also um, elements like the transom support legs which these are here these are actually a cnc cut item and they um, help us to position the height of the transom which is a little bit more tricky because it's curved and there's various other things going on but you can see that these also have the uh, waterline one reference in them so these will drop into the strong back in this way and then they'll just inch up until their height breaks that laser line and then that puts us in the right plane for setting the transom height we also have a similar affair up at the forward end of the boat where the stem goes so the stem lamination jig is a um a kind of double function thing basically it forms initially a jig for making our lamination for the curvature of the stem and secondly it gets cut down and it then forms an alignment system for putting the stem in the boat so what that does is it fits on this flat here up on the uh, the stem rung and as you can see again we've got our waterline one mark so that fits up against the rung and then it just moves until you break that laser line and then you've got your stem at the perfect position. So, we'll take a little bit more of a look at the lamination jigs in the next video. Uh, that's gonna include the stem lamination jig. We've also got some big lamination jigs for the stringers and we've got a jig for the transom as well. So here are the lamination jigs. That's the one you just saw putting the stem into place. Then we've got the big lamination jig for forming the stringers and then this is the jig that forms our transom as well and the curvature that we have going on there and you can see in the drawing a bit of a glimpse of what that does and this is the drawings that illustrate our other two lamination jigs so we'll take a look at those in the next video we'll start putting together some of those jigs we'll start doing some laminated pieces so there we go, that is everything we're gonna cover in this video. We've put most of the frames together, we've got a few more left to do, and I've got a couple of bits to cut. Had a little look at the, uh, the laser setup for the strong back. Hopefully that's started to uh, explain that process for you a little bit. So in the next video, we're gonna take a look, as I said, at some of the uh, lamination jigs. We'll start putting some more of the elements of the boat together. We'll probably do a, a dry installation of all the frames so we can get them all set up on that um, waterline one mark. And, um, we'll slowly start getting all the bits ready to do an install. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.